80 minutes, maybe half an hour. We shouldn't stop any longer than that because uh, we'll be a failing light by the time we get back here. So, mm -hmm. thank you. All right, you're welcome. Okay. Get off, and, <laughs> <laughs> get off and then say, see you later. We've got a good strong tide going at the moment. So. It's going that way though, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be pushing against the tide. <laughs> so Hello again and uh, welcome along to the Piero Coffee and Art podcast. This is episode two. Uh, on, we're out and about today, so it's actually Piero Coffee and Art on the water. I'm very excited to say that uh, this is the third boat trip that we've done with the Little Hampton Ferry. And um, it's a trip up to, the, uh, up to Arundel on the water and we have our captain with us. Hello, good afternoon. My name's Julian. Uh, I'm the, uh, one of the skippers here, uh, sharing it with, uh, with Rob um, and looking after the the customers coming on the Little Hampton Ferry. Uh, it's a delightful experience, particularly our harbour tours. We do a number of harbour tours during the day, uh, based at five pounds a head, and lasting between 20 and 25 minutes, where we take our customers up underneath the footbridge at Little Hampton, past the Aaron View, and then along the next stretch of water, up past Little Hampton Marina, and under the A259 bridge, and then into the countryside for a short way, uh, where they can sample the countryside and experience the peace and tranquility and then turn around and then bring them back through the same waterway back through past the Lampton Marina and then down through past the commercial wharf and under the footbridge and past the very lovely west-facing terraces of the new housing and the new wharf and on the other side showing the old boatyard buildings and the charm of the classic boats that are moored along that side of the river. And then down you have the spectacular view of Little Hampton, Little Hampton landscape, or um, shorescape effectively, as it's adjacent to the water, and then up towards where we berth near the town quay. <coughs> we also offer, uh, throughout the day, uh, in, tucked in between the tours, our little ferry crossings from the East Beach, uh, or East Pier, to the West Beach uh, via the Little Hampton Yacht Club West Pier. And uh, this is a short hop, but it's quite interesting because the river is a very, very fast flowing river. So we give the customers the experience of us having to turn into the tide and come up alongside uh, very carefully, uh, but sometimes at some speed uh, due to the fact that we're coming against quite a strong tide. I do have to ask you, I just saw you doing one of those trips and, and the one little child was going, he's crashed, he's crashed. Yeah. Have you ever crashed into the side? No, no, we haven't crashed, we bump into bump. the side, we bump into the side. <laughs> And yes, that does happen. We do bump into the side. Um, you've got to bring a vessel, sometimes with 10 people on board, uh, alongside with some speed or going against a five or six knot tide. And therefore you've got to, uh, you can't actually reduce speed to, to zero. You've just got to uh, come alongside at speed and then cut the throttle at the very last minute and get off and take a turn on the spring cleat and take your bow line on it as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, often in these cases we have to ignore any telephone calls and we try and get back to people afterwards. Uh, but it does take 100% uh, concentration. Um, Do you have any pathways as you're kind of going back and forth that you have to stick to? Because obviously it's quite a busy river. It's a, it's a busy river. We, we turn uh, soon after leaving the berth um, and obviously being mindful and giving way to oncoming traffic going up or down the river. So if we see there's quite a heavy flow of traffic going up and down the river, we'll pause and wait uh, for the point of delay for departure until the river is clear. And then of course you do the same the other side, you've got to turn round into the tide before you come up alongside. Um, the difference when you can do it all very quietly and softly is at high water or at low water when you don't have the force of the tide with you. And how much difference does the tide make? Because somebody did say to me that it is the second fastest um, yeah, it's, river it's, in it's, the It's the second UK. fastest river in the UK. So the period around high water or just after, it's very gentle on the tide. Um, and then as the tide gets into full flow, so that's an, from an hour after high water, uh, or conversely into full flood an hour or two hours after low water um, then you start getting the build up of the tide and as we're seeing now we're seeing a very very strong tide 
uh, flowing down the river, the ebb tide. And the Atlanta is a very interesting phenomenon. That ebb tide will continue until it almost meets the flood tide coming in. Is that uh, unusual? Uh, well, it's unusual because most places you get a, what you call slack water. Okay. So the tide drops in it. But here, the River Arran is 38 miles long up to uh, Pulborough. And as a result, there's an awful lot of water coming downstream. And that's part of it's all tidal water. Uh, the aspect we also find that's very fascinating is when the tide comes in, about one and a half to one, yeah, one and a half hours into the flood tide, uh, it's common to see a pale blue arrow of the uh, seawater, the new tide seawater coming in up the river. And this meets the uh, more tanned colour water that's come down from Arundel uh, with tidal rips, uh, such you can very noticeably see this blue arrow of fresh water. So it's a, a very exciting geographical phenomenon to see that. How uh, often does the ferry operate? Because obviously there, there must be a closed and open season, I guess. Well, the, uh, absolutely. It's very much a summer operation. So this year we were able to open for the Whitsunbank holidays. It uh, came out release of lockdown after 17th of May. And uh, so we opened then and our owners took the decision that we would operate seven days a week. So <coughs> Rob and I share the role, uh, working four or three on our, and the Reef equivalent off, sharing the role to, in order to provide that service. Yeah. So it's lovely to be able to say, yes, we're open seven days a week. The exception is subject to weather. If we get very, very strong winds, so 25 knots and above, oh, right, that yeah. precludes us from yeah. operating. We're still sitting here in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have a bibbony that covers half the boat. so uh, It's why we've, we've gone for the back tonight, but the sun's come out now. The sun's all come out. All day now. it's been trickling, going, oh, what's it going to be like? We're going to go for the back. And it's like, oh, it's all fine. It's fine now. <laughs> it's a glorious so, evening. Yeah. I mean, it, you, it must be a joy to, to do it this is, kind of It is. It is lovely. And then the evening rolls are nice. We did a harbour to a uh, Arundel trip yesterday. Uh, yesterday evening's a birthday party. Um, and we had some thoroughly enjoyable guests on board so they brought lots of uh, refreshments with them they set up the cocktail table and the ice bucket and they thoroughly enjoyed that it's an amazingly relaxed uh, atmosphere and and when we did it the first time and you said obviously bring drinks we're prepared for this evening yes there's bottles of wine gin and tonic and everything (laughs) so so, so that's good although i am driving after so i suspect i'll probably be on water but hey um yes it's just such a an amazing experience kind of seeing how quiet it is out there as well yeah, that's the is. thing that surprised me the most yeah, if, we, if we can run with the tide then it's a very quiet journey which is lovely um, the sofas on the on the on the boat are very very comfortable so everybody lets just relaxes into that and it uh, becomes a very very comfortable ride and every time you turn a corner there's a new a new landscape to look at which is fascinating all the wildlife as well um, we, you know, we saw kingfishers last night and herons and uh, even Gavin the seal uh, well up. that was my next question actually yes. so I've done this trip twice now with customers and I'm yet to see actually Gavin indeed uh, and it took me a while uh, but last night he was there ah right okay. so uh, yeah so that was it was great to see him it was just uh, seaward side of Ford uh, we saw him there last uh, last. Well, time fingers crossed he'll make an appearance so, this exactly, evening. Exactly, hopefully he'll appear this evening, which is great. The other thing that's very, very noticeable is the very large number of swans on the river, particularly between Ford and Arundel, which is nice. They seem um, to be quite quite renowned for swans here, because when I first moved to the gallery, people would say to me, oh, you know, there's, there's lots of swans, and I, I didn't see that many, and people go, oh, they've kind of disappeared over the years, but actually they've disappeared more from the commercial aspects of the river. Yeah. If you get on here and as you go up, as you say, there are quite a lot up there, Absolutely. and, and once, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, once, once they, they know it's a quieter area, yes. uh, they do, they really do. Uh, you, see, you can see them sort of nesting, courting, and when you see the two swans with the heart shape of the necks, it's all very lovely, and, and uh, everybody feels a really warm, fuzzy feel when they see it. <laughs> and how long has the ferry been here for? Because we've had people come into the gallery and go, oh, not the old rickety one, that's not all still, <laughs> still going. It's just like, think of something as I far away from rickety this... as you can think of, and then we're on it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this ferry's been here, I think, for, I believe, over 10 years. Wow. Um, Previous ferries, of course, have been here, uh, dotted on and off a little bit, um, back as our 1825. Oh, right, wow. And the ferries really have been an important part 
of Littlehampton since then, primarily because the uh, lowest crossing point of the river was the old bridge in Arundel uh, up until the time when the swing bridge was built in 1906. So, um, and in all my time here, actually, and I've been here for almost four years now, I'm yet to actually see the swing bridge open. <laughs> well, the swing bridge, of course, is no longer there. It's now the footbridge, um, and the footbridge uh, slides back on itself uh, in a very unique and very simple design, uh, ready for the coaster to come in uh, to do the delivery of uh, aggregate for the tarmac yard and that's the, the remaining commercial section of it. They will also open the bridge uh, for yachts um, if one gives the harbour master uh, instructions or requests before four o'clock of the previous day. So they will get the, the bridge opening the next day and they're very very helpful in the harbour office as well which is which is great. Uh, it is quite an operation for them to do so that's why they need a bit of notice before doing it. Um, it's, it's still a very busy river. I mean, I've just mm. as we walk down the, uh, the the slip on the way down, I noticed the new the new ship that's coming, our Lizzie. But we get a lot of those. We are getting oh, a lot of those. It's are we a tremendous. destination for people I, to come to? I think we are getting more of a destination. More people are beginning to uh, think. Oh, hang on a minute! You can come into the River Arran at Littlehampton. You can berth in a visitor's berth uh, with a bit of sun in your afternoon, evening, and you're in a deep deep berth adjacent to the East Quay and you've got the facilities that are in the harbour office and the marina staff, well the harbour staff are very very pleasant and very very helpful they help you come alongside uh, which is great and then we all meet the, the ferry driver as well and uh, they have a nice experience and it becomes the home or destination of quite a number of club yacht club cruises which is great to see yeah. and it's probably more popular for that than say Brighton Marina okay. uh, which and, and don't get anywhere why? near that number of Sorry. Any reason why? Uh, well, Brighton Marina is very shallow at low water, ah, right, okay. uh, which is a shame. Um, and some yachts do find that a bit sort of uh, causing apprehension. Um, but um, we, we find that Lady B Marina at Shore and Port is attracting more visitors, and here at Littlehampton are attracting more visitors. And does having the yacht club here, does that bring people in? I think it does. I think we've had a number of clubs that have come in here and then they've uh, either taken the ferry or they've walked around to have a dinner at the Aaron Yacht Club. Yeah, uh, They resonate very well and the Aaron Yacht Club is a very friendly club. It makes visitors feel very welcome. Uh, but it is a drying uh, club marina base so hence why the visitors obviously remain on the harbour front side. Um, we've done some trips across uh, for pre in previous seasons for, for groups that have come and wanted to do that. Uh, however, obviously, anything later on, they've got to walk around because uh, yes. we don't operate at hours of darkness. No. <laughs> is, is there a reason for that? Is it just a safety aspect? It's a general safety aspect. It's, uh, you know, we don't have uh, a large element of lighting. Uh, we're conscious that it can disturb other people on the river if we're working at night. And um, that tends to be really the pattern. Uh, is, is working up until the end of the day. I'm, ho I'm hoping on the recording you can actually hear the uh, the masts clean. I love that sound. <laughs> if great. I lived on the river, I think I'd be asleep very quickly most nights. <laughs> um, so, what's what kind of speeds does the ferry do? If you, if you were if you were allowed to sort of go as fast as you could, well, the the speed limit on the river is seven and a half knots, six and a half knots. Um, we haven't achieved that yet. We we tend to run because we're running against the tide quite a lot of the time. And those cases we're only about three and a half knots. Um, coming back with the tide, we can get to six knots or six point five uh, as the most. But generally speaking, with the tide, we're running at about five point eight to six knots, and against the tide, at about three knots, three and a half. So we have to use quite a lot more power on the engine to do that. Uh, I'm also conscious that you know the more power, the more revs, the more noise. It's not quite so nice for our passengers. Yes. So we try and keep a balance to to reduce that where we can. I had said that on the first trip actually to the group that I was with at the front that it just seems so very quiet. Not just the atmosphere of the river, but also the ferry itself. Because I was expecting, and you know, almost like something like Steamboat Willie, where it was just going to be chugging along. <laughs> so yes, I was quite surprised by that. Um, how much uh, does it cost for you to do the evening up to up to Arundel we, and back? Yeah, we do the the evening tour. I mean, they're they're a private hire, so you're hiring the whole boat uh, for t ten or eleven guests, 
and so the charge there is £180. And that's probably made up uh, very largely of fuel used, uh, going up uh, that stretch of river. Uh, we're covering a distance of seven miles each way. 